Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. From today we are going to discuss timing constraints. In this particular video, I am going to discuss very very important timing constraint. In fact, that is the most important timing constraint, which is create clock timing constraint. And now without wasting much time, let us see where to use this timing constraint, how to use this timing constraint and what are its advantages. Hello friends, in my previous video we discussed in detail that what are the possible types of path that exist in the digital design in a single clock domain. And we discussed four types of path, register to register, input delay path, output delay path and combination logic from input to output. So if you want to go in depth what we discussed, I will share its video link in the description section as well as in the i bar section you can go through them. And in the next video we discussed how will you constrain the register to register path and we explored that we can use these two type of constraints create clock and create generated clock constraints i will also share the video link where we discuss create clock and create generated clock constraints overview in the description section as well as in the i bar section you can go through it now the question arises what is the purpose of these two constraints create clock and create generated clock the purpose of these constraints is to instruct the PNR tool to do the placement and routing in such a way that design should work at the specified frequency or other lower frequencies. So basically in these two constraints we will specify the maximum frequency of operation. So when we will see the syntax we don't specify the frequency in these two constraints but we specify the period of the clock. Both are the same things. Other purpose is to instruct the timing analysis tool to report the slack. Friend, this slack is the difference of expected time period and the time period that tool is able to meet. It can be positive slack as well as negative slack. If the slack is positive, then my design will work at the expected time period of operation or the maximum frequency of operation. If the slack is negative, then my design will not work at the expected time period or frequency of operation. Friends, now I am going to discuss where we should use the create clock and where we should use create generated clock constants. So in the given digital design, clock input is going to the clock modifier block, for example a PLL, a DLL, clock manager or any other type of clock modifier block like clock divider or any type of clock multiplier. And let us name its output as CL can score CMB and this is going to digital design. Clock in is also going to digital design directly without the clock modifier block. At the input port where the clock input is clock underscore in, we must define create clock. And at the output of clock modifier block, we should define create generated clock. But friends, exceptions always exist. Sometimes instead of defining create generated clock at the output of CMB block, we may define create clock at the output of CMB block. But those cases we are not going to discuss in this video, otherwise this video will become very lengthy. But friends, the purpose of this video is to discuss create clock constraint syntax which is used to define a clock and we will see what all type of inputs we give while defining a clock. Now let us discuss create clock constraint syntax. So this constraint should be written in a constraint file. There are various type of extensions used for constraint file. For example, .sdc, .xdc but this constraint should be written in a constraint file. So in its constraint we write create underscore clock. So this constraint will create a clock having name clock underscore name. So this clock group name is used by the timing analyzer tool to report the timing. And this name can be different from the actual clock input port name. This name can be anything. This will be used for the timing analyzer tool to report timing. Next part is hyphen period. We need to specify the period of the input clock. And usually this time is accepted as a nanosecond if you if we don't specify any unit with it. So period specify the period of the source clock. Then hyphen waveform. This is very very important option. In this option we specify clock edge specification. We define when my rising edge occurs, when my falling edge occurs. Indirectly we are writing the duty cycle. So we will discuss this waveform option in detail in the subsequent part of the video. And finally we will write clock source, the actual source of the clock. Most of the time it will be input port 
as I specified earlier. Last option is hyphen add. It is optional constraint to define two clocks at the same node. So for example, I want to give two constraints at the same input port. In one clock constraint, I want to analyze timing for 100 megahertz. In another, I want to analyze for 200 megahertz. So both of them can be given together. But if we give both the create clock constraint without hyphen add option, the later one will override the previous one. But if we add hyphen add option, then both the constraint will be retained and the timing analysis tool will give the timing for both of the constraints. Friends, now let us consider one example. Create clock hyphen name BFT clock. So this is the name of the clock group that I have given. Hyphen period 5. That means period is 5 nanosecond. Get ports clock in. So that is the actual clock input port clock underscore in. And if you see the create clock name I have given different BFT clock. Here hyphen waveform option is not added. Hyphen add option is not added. If we don't add hyphen waveform option, that means the duty cycle of my clock is 50%. Just for your knowledge, why different name is allowed here from the actual port name? Because we can create multiple clocks for the same port. Here BFT clock is where period I am specifying 5 nanosecond. Another clock I can create for the same port where I can ask to do analysis for period of 10 nanosecond. Then I have to give a different clock name here. So if this option is not given, then I cannot create multiple clocks on the same input port. Friends, this hyphen waveform option is very important and very interesting. Let us dig deep into the waveform option. Friends, to know the details of hyphen waveform option, I am using Vivado tool. So in Vivado's help of create clock constraint, right? I am getting this waveform option, hyphen waveform option. It allows argument 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. So what, what do we specify as argument 1, 2, 3 and so on? The rising and falling edge times. So the first constraint is when is my rising edge? Argument 2 is when is my falling edge time? First argument 1 is rising edge time. Second argument is falling edge time of the waveform of the defined clock. Basically, indirectly we are specifying the duty cycle and this time is given in nanosecond over one full clock cycle. So in one full clock cycle, we give the rising time and falling time. So indirectly we are specifying the duty cycle. You can use multiple rising and falling edge to define the characteristics of the waveform. But sometimes what happens if my waveform is not uniform, for example, in the first clock cycle, my edges are different than the edges of the second clock cycle then the edges of the third clock cycle for example after four clock cycle my waveform repeats so those edges also i can specify here but there must be an even number of edges but here you need to specify the even number of edges representing both the rising and falling edges of the waveform the first time specified argument represents the time of the first rising transition and the second time specified is a falling edge if the value for the falling edge is smaller than the value of the rising edge, it means that the falling edge occurs before the rising edge. Note, if you don't specify the waveform, the devolved waveform is assumed to have rising edge at 0 nanosecond and falling edge at half the specified period, period by 2. That means duty cycle is 50%. Friends, we already did lot of study about static time analysis and nowhere we found that our period analysis, our static time analysis is dependent on the duty cycle. But here through hyphen waveform option, we can take the duty cycle option also and even more complex cases where clock is not uniform and we can specify the rising and falling edges till many clock cycles. So in our upcoming videos, we see, we will see those examples and we will come to know why this option is added. Friends, in this video, we studied about create clock constraint and its various options. Now in the upcoming next video, I will apply this create clock on a design and I will show you how time analysis tool reports the timing for this constraint. And with this friends, I am going to end this video. I hope that this video will be quite informative for all of you. If you also like this video, please press the like button and you can share your feedback in the comment section. In future also, we are going to create many such videos. 
so to be aligned with our channel don't forget to subscribe it and press a bell icon to get the notification of all the upcoming videos thank you so much for watching and your time